All right, it looks oh. like you're on me. Okay, hey, how you doing? Hey, how are you? I'm all right, man. I'm all right. I can't okay. complain. Cannot right. nice. Thanks for letting me join. No problem. So are you new to phone flipping? Have you been phone flipping uh, before? Are you experienced? Um, no, I, um, I've took a, a couple courses before, but because um, I'm, I'm, I'm only limited to a certain amount of money and some are talking about, um, you know, running Facebook ads and Google ads and <laughs> And I don't have the money to do that. So that was kind of holding me back. So yes, sir. Okay. All right. And and I will tell you, you don't need Facebook ads. You don't need Google ads. You don't need any of that. That stuff is bonus. That stuff you can do um, to help you, but it's not at all something that you need to do to start mm -hmm. phone flipping. So just to start out, let me tell you guys a little bit about me. Um, phone flipping is something I do every single day. Um, I flipped about in total, 30 of my stores, I believe we flipped 27, 30 phones today. Um, and usually when it comes to flipping phones, I tell people it's not rocket science. And it's not. Um, but it has become a art all of a sudden um, in my eyes because people make it more complicated. So what I want you guys to do as you guys are going through this presentation with me is don't hesitate to ask questions, but also understand not to overthink it okay because again this is not hard um a lot of people take courses and don't understand what they have taken or what they are um okay hold on somebody else wants to join give me one second they don't understand what they're learning via that course how do i add this one second come back one second guys because people are let me open this up for a second while I'm talking. I don't want people to interrupt us. All right. So um, now we're going to go over what is phone flipping, find the devices, platforms to use, price list, how to budget, making your offer, um, selling devices, and then we're going to do a QA. and a All right. So here we're able to build all at once. Join y'all. Here is it. Okay. We're here to join all at once and be able to learn. And is everybody a part of the Discord? Is everybody a part of the Discord that I have? Yes. All right, perfect. So the Discord I have, I have a whole bunch of experienced individuals in there that show their winnings and also answer questions as well. And guys, I'm telling you right now, it's all about networking when it comes to phone flipping. So what is phone flipping? Supply and demand, okay? What that means basically is we're demanding a supply. The supply is phones. I can't tell you guys how much I've made off of phone flipping because this is something I've done to literally survive. I've got my first car phone flipping. I've got my first house phone flipping. I got my first rental property phone flipping. Um, it, this is just something that has always been at a high um, demand. And why? Because you have to think about it, right? When we look at phone flipping and devices in general, you have to understand people use these on an everyday basis, right? So you people using this and buying it on a consistent basis every year, every month, this is a field you want to get into because this is a never ending uh, need and niche that you guys can take advantage of. It's a never ending business. And it, of course, takes negotiations. So when it takes negotiations, and what I mean by that is you can negotiate. So somebody can want 500 for a phone, you can negotiate them down. That is something I love is being able to change the prices. Okay. Being able to get a bargain. It's sort of kind of like a flea market where you're able to walk up to somebody's table and say, Hey, would you take X amount? Same thing with phone flipping. And you have to understand you're going to get told no, especially when you're not doing ads, you're going to get told no a lot more, but you're also going to be gaining people and connections that you'll be able to utilize. Now, finding devices. How do you find devices? You look on the right platforms. This is where the ads come and go, right? Let me explain to you why people want you to utilize ads. People want you to utilize ads because that is an easier way for you to be able to either fail or succeed. You no longer dictate your success when it comes to the ad realm because the ads are the ones pushing leads to you. So when it comes to leads, uh, Chris, I'm going to ask you, when it comes to leads, do you know exactly what I mean by leads? And I'll read what your response is. Chris, do you know what I mean by leads? Mm 
Mm, I'll give you a second. Okay, so no, that's fine. All right, let me ask you, Samuel, do you know what I mean by leads? Um, I'm thinking it would be um, a motivated seller. A motivated seller, yes. So somebody that is selling a device and looking for some type of compensation, of course, it's going to be money. We don't really do trades, but it's going to drive people that are looking to sell their phones with an ad that may say, hey, we buy phones or, hey, um, I am somebody that is looking for a iPhone Pro Max or whatever you want to call it, right? So it's all about um, being able to find individuals that are looking um, for money. OK, because money is what you can go to McDonald's with and buy a cheeseburger, but a phone isn't. You can't go and buy something <laughs> with a phone. OK, it has to be turned into currency. What's up, Andy? All right. So having a price list to compare. Now, you have to have some type of price list, whether it's a free or a paid price list. Price lists are the gold mine, not because of just the connection of somebody buying, but also having the ability to compare prices, also know what the market value is. Um, and that's sort of kind of where when you buy sealed phones, knowing the market value is, is really, really important. Um, Samuel, do you know what I mean by market value? Um, I'm assuming that's the, uh, the price you would get if it's sold for retail. Okay, that's a good that's a good one. Chris, do you know? You could type it in the chat and I'll read it. And I know you're new, Chris. So I'm asking you these questions because it sort of kind of helps me gauge what I have to go over. It, it sort of kind of lets me know. So what what's your question again? Okay, so my question is, do you know what market value is? So market value of a device. Okay. So the market value of a device, it is sometimes what it will go retail, but honestly, what it is, is what the value of that device is in other collective amounts of wholesale buyers. So prime example, if everybody on this call was a wholesale buyer and we, I guess, all have a store, right? Store A, B, C, and D. And we, I say, hey, I sell iPhone 13s for 400 in my store. Andy says he sells them for three fifty in his store, and Samuel says I sell it for five hundred, and Chris says I sell it for eight. There's a big discrepancy, so we need to add all of these and divide it by four, so we get the median. Okay, and that's sort of kind of how you find that product, um, the, the value of that product in the wholesale realm. Okay, so product value is very important. Okay, the market price is very important. Now, knowing exactly what your budget is. Now, Samuel, you hit that. You hit that. You hit the hammer on the nail with that. You have okay. to know what your budget is and you have to also know what you're not willing to go over. OK, that's very important not to go over your budget, but also be disciplined enough to know, OK, my budget is X, Y and Z. And these are the phones I'm attack. I mean, I think it's the price of the product in general. OK, so no, Chris, it's not. It's, it's going to be the price that wholesalers or other sellers, not us but sellers that we're selling device to, so buyers to us are selling devices for, okay? Because that is one of the avenues we use to sell our devices. We have two avenues. So we have selling to a wholesale buyer and we also have selling to a consumer. So a consumer is going to be somebody that is a regular customer off the street. A buyer is going to be somebody that is buying a device in a different country or buying a device in california but has a store i sell strictly currently right now and a majority of my phones to consumers um right now when it comes to buyers it's a bit shaky and we're we're gearing up for another iphone and all of that so i i tend to sell to consumers currently uh because consumers are right now they have their tax money i i just understand the market the supply and demand tax money is going to be where I'm going to try and take advantage of the consumer rather than a buyer. Buyers already have the capital, right? So I can utilize them when it comes to holiday time and I utilize the consumers when it comes to the tax time, okay, tax season. Because who doesn't want a new phone, all right? 
Um, so platforms are used. So Samuel, this is where when you just got on and you were saying that, you know, everybody was talking about ads and Google ads and telling you you need to do it this way. This is where you'll be able to save a couple dollars. OK, okay. you don't necessarily need ads. OK, I, I do think ads are helpful at a certain point. But in your position, what you just explained, I think offer up would be good. Facebook Marketplace, not really eBay, because I wouldn't recommend you getting the devices shipped to you. But offer up and marketplace, Facebook Marketplace are free platforms for you to list. OK, now for you also to buy devices, um, it's a revolving door. You can buy a device from somebody and you can also list the device. So I can buy something iphone 14 from somebody and then i can go ahead and sell it on offer up at the same time okay i do that all the time i buy phones from somebody that lives in my city and then once i buy the phone i have the audacity to list it on offer up for a higher price and it sells so it's all about how long are you willing to wait that's the game that you must play when it comes to these platforms is Facebook is going to be a lot longer than offer up, but offer up is not going to be immediately most times unless you have a current model you're selling. I have had iPhone 13s on my offer up for about a month and a half. I've sold 12 of them, but I have 24. So I have a, few, a lot more to sell, um, but it, it, it it's, it's more profit. OK, so with a buyer, I'll probably get like 225 250 maybe 300 with consumers i'm getting 350 immediately cash okay so benefits of a price list you got market value a uh, huge variety and fast profit okay so when it comes to buyers and these price lists um it is good that you have a variety of phones that you can buy but what i will say is again you have to understand when to utilize a buyer buyers are not always um ready to be utilized uh facebook market oh and andy commented facebook marketplace for sure and offer up yeah i don't like waiting more than a week yep i agree so andy doesn't like wait, waiting more than a week um and a lot of people don't a lot of people do not like waiting um a lot of people which i agree a lot of people want that turnaround okay because when you're putting your money out there you want your bread back you want your money back you know so you can go back into flipping or paying a bill um especially in the society we are in right now we want our money we want our fast turnaround and that's why i sell to consumers currently a lot more all right so now we have know your budget now this is where a lot of us fail okay because we don't know how to construct our budgets now what do i mean by that so when you're making money there there's a way that you have to uh maneuver it i do not believe that money is just a piece of paper the way i view money is it being a living organism and money is supposed to be treated in some type of way i believe that okay if you guys um want check out the 10 com money commandments the 10 money commandments have taught me a lot about money and what we're talking about when it comes to knowing your budget you got your main income right so that will be a nine to five that will be your job whatever whatever you got going on whatever gig you got um that will be a main income you want to take your main income and you want to separate it into two sectors you got a cash fund and then you got a bank account of course you should have a bank account um i run into a lot of people that don't have bank accounts nowadays but you should have a bank account okay now you also should have a change fund okay i have a envelope where i have my change fund currently oh my bad this envelope right here i have about seven of these in my stores and these envelopes are envelopes that are attached to registers inside these envelopes are a bunch of money okay a bunch of like money and receipts and in these envelopes we keep cash now i have one in my house i have one in my office i have one mostly everywhere because i buy phones a lot but you want to have a change fund you want to have an envelope like that why because having that envelope is going to 
prevents you from having a hold up at like a ATM. Um, hold on. We have Andy that actually a cash app or PayPal at least, but a business bank account once you can. Yes. Yes. That is a fact, um, which we're going to get into when it comes to this change fund, you want to have your budget. So Samuel, whatever your budget in your mind, you want it to be, put it in that envelope. Yes. The reason is because you can tan, you can physically see how much money you have. If you do it in a bank account, you can't physically maintain your budget. A lot of people will overspend. A lot of people will dig into other money. That's why I say keep it physical. Keep it physical. The bank account, that's where you put all your money at that you're paying for your bills and your, 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 your money to go out with your girl or whatever you got going. That's where you keep all that money for regular life. Okay. Now, the, mo the money from your cash fund should always go towards phones and devices only, nothing else. This is where you got to be very disciplined. Okay. Now, some of the money from your bank account, you pay your bills and save money to invest and do, et cetera. All right. Let me see something. All right. So, another thing I want to talk about with this is how is the reverse? Like, what do I do, Brandon, when I make money from phones? So when you make money from phones, you have to some way, somehow figure out how much profit you want to make, okay? So when it comes to profit, another way to do it, Andy said, another way to do it would be to pull to, man, I looked at these clips without the glasses today and like my eyes are a little different right now, okay? Oh, yeah, <laughs> Apologies uh, there, Brandon. I was just saying, as far as keeping your daily budget, you could go to the bank and pull your daily budget and then have it on you that whole day. Yeah, yeah, you could definitely do that. And doing that is a good way. Um, it's, it's, it's good. I used to do that until it got to the point to where my bank closed and I had like late night deals. If you're somebody that has a a um a schedule, like you know for a fact I'm not going to do it after 4. I will recommend it, but like with me, I was like doing it uh all times of the day and um having problems like getting them to uh, approve different uh withdrawal amounts from the ATM. But you can do that. Now the way and Andy just said that is very much a uh, safer route um, because you'll be able to have your money in one, you know, branch, bank branch, and um, pull it out anywhere. Now, if you're if you're traveling, definitely do that uh, as well. Yeah. All Another right? thing is, like for example, if your daily budget was five hundred dollars, regardless of what time of day you're meeting with them, you pull the five hundred that morning. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, and then um, yeah. So making your offer, okay? So tell offer, ask IMEI, set up meetup, okay? Now telling the offer, this is where, and we're gonna go over this. I'm, I'm gonna do some offers. Um, but telling an offer is basically letting a buyer, I mean a seller, excuse me, know exactly what you're willing to offer, ask questions, um, ask discovery questions. Why wouldn't you ask discovery questions? Discovery questions are very important because it helps you learn if they're a wholesale seller. Samuel, what's a wholesale seller? Do you know? Um, someone who buys at the wholesale and then they sell um, they sell to retail to make a profit. Okay, okay. So that, that um, in essence, is a wholesale seller. The type of wholesale seller I'm talking about is somebody that gets devices from whether it's a store or a person um, or individual, not usually businesses, unless it's Verizon, AT&T, Xfinity, um, or T-Mobile, but they get these devices and then they wanna sell it to you in bulk because they just want the cash. They only pay taxes for the phones or they paid a small amount for these devices. So they're usually on offer up. And I'm gonna show you, they're usually on and, like- and a, big, and, and a big giveaway is if it's still in the box sealed. Yep. If it's still in the box seal, they're wholesale sellers. And these are pers people that sell to buyers all the time. So these are really what wholesale sellers are. These are people that if you network the right way with, they'll make you some money. Okay. Um, a wholesale seller, every wholesale seller I have makes me around $2,000 a month um, only because they're just, and that's at, at least because they're, this is what they do like for a living. So like they, like literally get phones every week 
I don't know. I mean, it's so many different ways how. Me, me and Brandon will both tell you they'll open that box. Yeah, uh, definitely open the box. Um, not opening the box is uh something you know I've learned. Uh, cool. and and you know, <laughs> it's very difficult to um, and we'll go over that too. It's very difficult to trust people nowadays. Um, people are very desperate, um, very desperate, you know, so you want to be careful. All right. Have you ran into any of that, Samuel? Um, not, um, not as far as phone flipping. I mean, I know, I understand what Sam like with people nowadays, you gotta, yeah, you know, they, it, you gotta be very cautious. So, <laughs> Yeah. Dot, dot your eyes and cross your T's for sure. Oh, yeah. They say don't trust anybody. So, yeah. So, what I say is inspect what you expect. That's what I say. Inspect what you inspect what you expect because um, it might not be there. <laughs> all right. So, just making sure you do all of that. And also, you want to check the IMEI and then you want to set up the meetup. The meetup should always be in public. Um, and always should be where cameras are. I love to meet in front of ATMs. That's a, a really good spot. Not I'm talking about in front of ATMs outside, but ATMs inside of, I mean, not outside ATMs, but ATMs that are inside of locations. I like to do that because I know it's a camera always looking at that um, ATM. And most ATMs have cameras in them as well. Um, yeah, my, my preferences these days are Starbucks, banks, and supermarkets. Yep. I love supermarkets. Supermarkets around me have ATMs in them. So I usually meet them near the ATM. And Same it's like, Walmart. yep, this is always perfect because it's always in the front and it's just a lot of people around. Um, so when you sell the devices, okay, you have the device, right? The device is right here. So the device is right here. You have two options, sell it to a buyer, sell it to a consumer. You might think they're both buyers. That is correct. But one is a wholesale buyer and one is somebody that's buying to be able to use for their own leisure, their own um, purpose. OK, they want to take nice pictures and videos and stuff of that nature. They want to enjoy the new device buyers. They don't want to enjoy the device. They don't care about the device at all. They just want to sell the device to make another profit. All right. Now, once you sell to a buyer, always understand a buyer makes you get money fast. A consumer makes your money slow. But let me tell you something. A buyer gives you the least amount. A consumer gives you the most. OK, that is why I have stores and not just buyers, because consumers, they'll pay more. OK, they will pay more, but it takes a longer time. OK, it takes more promotion, more ads. That is where consumers come into play. Buyers, not so much. Okay. Buyers are looking for devices and only buy from market value. Consumers don't buy off of market value. They buy off of what they feel and what their emotions tell them a device is worth. Okay. So that's the difference. All right. Now, the conclusion. I know I ran in a lot so far. Okay. Very fast. But it's because it's like clockwork and it's easy. Okay, this is easy. You want to find a device. You want to sell it. You want to find it on the app. Okay, offer up, Samuel. That's what you're going to use. Offer up. You, you you find it on offer up. Once you find it on offer up, you start negotiating and talking to somebody and trying to hash out a deal. The deal has to it has to go with your budget though, right? So your budget matters, and they need to um, be able to be in that benchmark of whatever your budget is, okay? And then you wanna sell the device, Samuel, and that's the easy part because you already have something of value. So um, those are the key steps. And that is a little bit, um, I have like this little um, slideshow where we talk about grades, but I don't wanna talk about the grades right now. What I wanna do is something different than I usually do in the class. I actually want to instead go over what, or how you can start. Now, I've always based these classes off of, um, oh, who is that? Keep, people keep trying to join. Let me lock this real quick. Hold on, I'm, I gotta lock the class. All right, because it's distracting me. All right, so what I like to do is focus on what the needs are. So what I will do is focus on if both of you have any needs, addressing those, showing those, answering those questions. My main thing is for the next 
Um, uh, 56 minutes to uh, I said 56 minutes, 36 minutes, or whatever this is. Um, to be able to help you guys in whatever pain points you have, phone flipping, um, and answer those questions. So, what I want to do first is Samuel, um, I'm going to ask you something because sure. I know, I know. Andrew is very well versed in this. And I know you said you were having a pain point as far as you, you were just buying courses and they were telling you to use um, ads. Do you have any questions on how you can obtain phones for free? Well, not for free, but <laughs> obtain the leads for free. Um, I mean, some, some of the things they, they mentioned, um, you could join um, like buy and sell groups through Facebook. And then I think Craigslist was one of the free ones. Mm, okay. Then they, they said that, but then another one said that that's outdated. You gotta, you gotta do Facebook ads now. So that kind of threw me. Yeah, that's a, that's not true. That's not true at all. Okay. So um, yeah, 30 reach outs per day. And so did they say anything about offer up or? Um, I think they mentioned offer up. I think they did mention offer up okay. or, or do a reach out through Facebook marketplace also. Yep. Yep. So let me show you a, a, a good example. Do you know what offer up is? Yes. It's like a, a buying sell a platform. Yes. Okay. I mean, yep. similar, kind of similar to Facebook marketplace, but yeah. Yep. Very similar. So I would just type an iPhone prime example. And if I type an iPhone, a whole bunch of phones are going to come up. I take shipping off. I go only to local. I keep it at 30 miles. That's just what I'm willing to travel. But well, no, 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 no. That's not what I'm willing to travel because I don't travel. But that's what I'm willing to have other people come and travel to me with. Okay. So one of my things, Samuel, is I don't meet people. Um, I do not meet people halfway because I lose my leverage. Once I meet you halfway, you can say, oh, by the way, the phone is cracked or you know, um, I'm not, uh, I'm not able to meet and I'm already sitting in the parking lot waiting. You know what I mean? So I usually tend to have people meet close to me. So they ask me my address or ask me my location. I look for a public location near me. Okay. And if they meet with me, they meet with me. If they don't, they don't, but I do not meet people halfway. I don't because there's no way for you to tell if it's halfway. That could really be where they live. You just never know. Okay, and then you lose your your uh, leverage. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. I, I found I found personally what I've done recently is, depending on uh, what area of town I want to meet up with, I've I have a pre set number of locations, and those are the locations I'll meet in that area. Yep, same here. I have a set amount of locations I will meet. I usually don't meet people in my stores. I, I keep my stores just out of uh, everything because um, it's just plus, easier. Plus the psychology for me is if I give them two or three options of places to meet, they feel like they actually made the decision. Whereas I already knew that those were the only two or three places I was willing to meet. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a really good one. All right. So now I typed an iPhone, Samuel. So when I typed an iPhone, you see phones pop up. What's your budget? Um. I'm going to say, um, I mean, I have a little more than that, but I, I don't want to like spend all my, all, all my savings. So yeah. Tell me something low. Tell me something I, low. I would say between like 150, 200. Okay. 150, 200. All right. So if your budget is 150, 200, then what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to probably 12s or 13s. Yep. So I would go to recents first. Okay. So I sort by and then I hit recents first. Okay. This shows me what was posted recently. Okay. Now I see an iPhone 11 red. I see an iPhone 13. Uh, I see an iPhone XR. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just open all of these. Oh, no, 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 no. Not like that. Not like that. Oh, crap. Hold on. Can't go back. Yeah, I can go back. All right, there we go. So we got this, we got this, and then we got this. We're just going to take three. These are the top three I see, Samuel, out of, you know, just randomly, okay? So you said 
150, 200, correct? Yes, correct. Okay. So if I was to see 150, 200, um, automatically what I would do is if I if that was my budget, I'm hitting and looking for phones in that realm. Now, look at this phone. It's cracked. It's messed up on the back. Uh, not sure why they have this picture here, but let's look at the description. It says cracked back screen camera lens cracked. Okay. So they've cracked, got ba uh, they've got screen back and camera. Jeez. Yeah. So this is what they're trying to show. So this is a damaged phone. So Samuel, for your budget, you could probably get this phone. It's going to be a mess. It's going to have a whole bunch of damage to it. Um, it wouldn't be worth it. Now, why? Because I'm assuming, Samuel, you don't have any repair connections and you don't know how to fix phones yourself. Am I right or wrong? Um, yes, yes, that's correct. Okay. So, and that's no problem. So, what we'll do, we'll just say that one is a. Uh, Can I ask a quick question on the repair conversation? Did yes, you ever find a solution as far as those damn camera lenses falling back out from the glue? Is the glue any better these days or is that still kind of a problem? Um, no, it's not a problem. You you, you got to get this certain type of glue um, that people use on iPads that I figured out. Um, so iPads don't have screws. Their screens don't screw in. Um, they glue in. All iPad screens are held in by glue. And they have this super uh, strong glue um, that you would use. So I'll be, I, could, I could tell that. I can email that to you uh, or send it in Discord. Well, I assume you have it, I assume you have it via connections on your uh, repair stuff too. So, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Cool. Um. Good so when it, uh huh. So when the iPhone 11 Red, this one says 250, Samuel, but this is above your budget, ain't it? Uh, yeah, by a little bit. Okay, let me tell you something. Whatever anybody lists a phone for an offer up, they're not trying to get that price. Okay. okay, so they're not trying to get 250, they're probably trying to get 200. Okay, but here's the issue can you sell an iPhone 11 Red 64 for $250? No, not really, not realistically, right? Can you do it? You can, but you have to wait for somebody very desperately to come across. Okay, and they will come. They will come. There will be somebody desperate to buy this for two fifty. Here, here, go. What you say? I was gonna say I'd offer him about one to one thirty. Yep. So here's where you will win, right? Is he posted this? I see it, Samuel, right here. He posted this three hours ago. Okay, three hours ago. So now I know for a fact that I get to test this person out and see if this person is a early adapter, which means. Does this person want to sell immediately? Like, do they want to sell right now? Or are they willing to wait a couple of days? Because for this 250 mark that they're looking at and that they're promoting this device for, they're going to have to wait. Okay, they're going to have to wait. I thought I locked this thing up. What is going on? People can uh, host much. Uh, I don't know how he keeps getting in here. All right. But yeah. So now when I see, when I see the time, right, I see three hours. Now I can think, okay, let me, let me test this person's um, discipline. Let me see if this person will sell to me because they want to get the money in their hand. Cause their rent could do, be due tomorrow or they could have a bill a cell phone bill or something that they need to pay tomorrow. So that's how I would address it. So what would I do? Right. One, I would always look at the description. It says comes with charger, but it doesn't say anything else. Okay. I don't know if this is locked. I don't know anything. It says iPhone 11, 64 gigabyte used, perfect condition. Now, as Andy just said, he would pay like 130, right? Uh, 130 would be the most I would pay. Why? Because this is a 64 gigabyte. This is not even a 128. So a 64, a 64 is very small. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, so let me tell you how I would attack this. I would just, and again, you don't have to say it in this verbiage, but I just wanted to let you know the method that I'm using. Okay, it's just I want to introduce my offer. So, hey, I can do 130, 
Um, and also, I really want to know what company is this, right? What company, yeah, right? If it's locked, you mean? Yeah. So, well, it is locked, I believe, because if it was unlocked, I would think he would put it in the title at this point because he put so much other stuff in the title, but it being unlocked, which is weird. So, Samuel, Andy, you already know this. We want to keep it as simple as possible. We don't want to like write paragraphs, but we also want to ask those discovery questions. Andy has his way of asking it, just like you're going to have your way, right? But ask the question. Like, don't ever hesitate to ask the question. I haven't been on offer up really at all. I know one that I borrow from you. I I ask a lot. Is do, does it come with the box and the charger? Which in that case, obviously, he mentioned the charger. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he he mentioned the charger. So Samuel, that is how we would start an offer. And then, as far as the negotiating negotiating aspect, then it's a whole different ball game. Um, but it is something that um, it's something that you having that common sense because even you wanting to get into phone flipping i'm sure you know how to flip in some type of way right it could be it could be shoes it could be uh, something you know how to flip right you know how to do um that part uh but you would just have to negotiate with the person okay and i have a tactic on that um but what i do want to do because i am trying to get to both of you is i want to now ask andy no, first I want to ask you, Samuel, what other question do you have um, in regards to what I just said? Do you have any questions on the basics I just went over? Um, because uh, I'm I'm confused on the IMEI because I some of the things I was looking at they said that um you don't have to check that because when when you you're, you're buying it as is, no. and then you're selling it as is, so you don't need to check the IMEI number. Hmm. Whoever told you that, don't listen. You learned that from a course? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. My hair not. Yeah, the IMI will tell you if it's if the device is locked, all kinds of stuff. Right. So here, here, oh. Samuel, let me tell you something. This right here is a platform I use to check IMEIs, okay? What do you think? That's sick W, I think. Yeah. Yep. Do you know what IMEIs are? Yes, it's a number on the phone. It's I got the identifies it. Yeah, I okay. what they call it, but okay. Yeah, I don't remember the abbreviation either. It's like identification machine echo, some sort of number thing. But it, yeah, it's like an identifying number. So, Samuel, this is all the information that IMEI shows you. Okay, it shows you what model it is, the first IMEI, the second IMEI, the MEID number, the serial number, if it's a replacement device, the warranty status, the estimate purchase date, the, if it's a demo unit, if it's a loaner device, if it's a replacement device, if it's a refurbished device, the purchase company, the lock carrier, and the SIM lock status. But you can go, you can go even further in depth with the carrier um, as well. But I'm gonna tell you something. If you paid for a course and they told you that, um just like they told you you can only flip phones really using ads that is insane and i want you to unlearn all of that because that is holding you back okay okay Which, that's fine i mean listen i'm glad i ran into you and i'm glad that you're able to you know figure this out and learn this for free to be honest you know so being able to figure this out is really helpful to you okay yes. so when it comes to the imei you want to check that with every device no, you, you check that. That, that, um, that prevents that prevents you from buying iCloud lock devices, and it prevents you from buying blacklist devices. Exactly. Okay. Now, 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 because some some are saying like, um, you shouldn't ask the IMEI right right up front when you negotiate it, or, or should you do that? Um. So here's the thing. <laughs> okay. So how can I put this? Okay, I'm gonna just say this. So. You can answer the IMEI whenever you want. The, the, the more they hide the IMEI, the more sketchy they are. Okay. Okay. Now, also, you have people that hide IMEIs because they're ignorant and they don't know. And ignorant as far as not a disrespectful way, but they just really don't know that that is something you need. But I tend to, if you don't give me the IMEI, I'm cool. I'm, I'm not going to buy it from you. 
Yeah. Um, it's no disrespect, but that's just like me buying a car and needing a title, in my opinion. Like, <laughs> if you if I would have bought a car and I want to see that you had a title and you tell me no, yeah. um, it's like getting a car fax. Agree. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I, that's the way I that's the way I usually approach it before I meet. I say, can I get the IMEI just to verify status before we meet up? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that that, that yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah yep. So and you can sure. even use that comparison when you tell them if they ask why you need it, you say it's just like the car fax so I can verify the phone. Yeah. Yeah, well yeah, that's good. Good good point. Yeah, okay. So that, that's very important. All right. So that is the IMEI. Now what else, what other question did you have? Um, oh, and, um, now say if I don't have enough money to buy, I know you have a price list. If, if I can't afford that right now, can I, can I just take, um, see, I think that's messing me up too. Cause I'm as far as the, um, knowing what to offer. Cause I, I was told well, on the course, they said, you look at but three eBay sold listings and then you divide that, by, I think by three and that gives you about what the, uh, about what you should offer them. For real? Better than nothing, but that's horrible. Um, so let me tell you who does that. Who does that? Pawn shops. Pawn shops do things like that. Why? Because they're trying to find the market value. And here's the thing. Pawn shops do it and they sell locally though. So they can do it. You know what I mean? Because they have people coming into their storefront looking for things already. I wouldn't recommend doing that. I would rec recommend looking at like free uh, prices like Atlas um like that would looking, be my recommendation i could kick you some ideas to other places that i've hooked up with yeah so you want to you want to find different places you don't want to do that that is very bad um and you didn't know but i'm just saying that's really bad because i actually started like that and then a phone buyer actually had to tell me and explain to me how bad that was because i don't know that person on ebay from a can of paint and I don't know what their profit margins are. And I also don't know where they're located. So yeah. it's a whole wide range of like. Unless you're fun. selling locally or on eBay, it's terrible. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So I wouldn't do that one. All okay. right. So thanks for clearing that up. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. No problem. What about now, anything I will else? Say, I will say one place I have found use for eBay is when I get iCloud locked or blacklist phones. Yeah. I have listed them on there for parts not working and gotten better prices from eBay even after fees versus selling yeah. it to a direct buyer. Yeah. So, and, and that's going to give you, again, you want to use all of your platforms to be able to uh, work for you to find the best deal. Okay. Um, so any other questions, Samuel, if um, you have them, keep coming, keep them coming. Okay. So now say, say for example, I, I, I get this phone and I want um so I want you I think you're saying that the best is to sell to a consumer so that would be I assume that would be eBay then right what's on eBay um you could sell on eBay you could sell online if you wanted um I, I would assume if you wanted to sell on eBay that would be something that you want to do because you don't want to meet up with someone but that wouldn't be the most profitable. The most profitable way would be to list it back on OfferUp or Facebook Marketplace and meet with somebody locally, not not ship. Plus, okay. you get cash and no fees. Yeah, I don't ever ship phones, really. Um, I, I sell phones on Macari sometimes, um, but that's like if I really just want to get the phone out of the way. But that's only also because Macari used to have um a really good uh system that i could rely on uh but yeah i wouldn't um i would not do that i would i would i would meet with people in person so i can get the credit especially starting out i want to get cash so okay yeah that because yeah, that because that, that was one of one of the other things that hold me back too because i because i haven't really i bought things on ebay but not sold so so that, okay. that was kind of um what, what yeah, you're saying no. what you're saying yeah it makes um it's giving me a little more confidence what you're saying yeah. yeah, the only times I've sold on eBay is when I had Blacklist or iCloud locked and I was selling them for parts. Other than that, I'm selling to a direct buyer or local myself. Yeah, okay. and that's low risk. So you remember, you want to lower your risk. What is that? Okay, lower your risk. Okay. All right. Yeah, 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 you're, yeah, you're making a lot of sense here. It's coming together. Yeah, that, yeah, the no other problem. possibility is if you don't want to sell to eBay with Blacklist, then I see you can look at repair shops because they look for parts too. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay, okay, it makes sense. Yep. Now, Andy, what questions did you have? Um, if any, not necessarily any right now at the moment. Okay. All right. So, Samuel, when it comes to um the status of where you're at phone flipping um you you said that you had phones already um no i, I i've gotten a couple of courses but i haven't actually oh okay. flipped any yet because right. because and you're in it and you're in a discord yes what's your name on discord um i think it's i think it's samuel and uh, my last name is v vetromile Okay. V, v is in Victor E T R O M I L E. Okay. I don't know if I've joined joined a class yet or not, but look at me. Look at me. No, no, no. It's, so the Discord, you don't have to you don't have to join a class with the Discord. Um the Discord is more so where you can um it's like it's it's free. It's no class. So you're listed under Samuel? Yes. Okay. Red Emperor here. Okay. Uh, nice to meet you. All right, so perfect, guys. So what we'll do is if there's no more questions, um, we're going to wrap it up because it's almost 9. But, um, well, it's almost 10, excuse me. Oh, yeah, 9.54. Yeah. yeah, but next week what we'll go is we'll talk about negotiation. So I have a slide and everything where I talk about negotiations more in depth that you guys should be able to uh, relate to. All right. Um, yeah. All right, so... Anything else? Um, no, I think you, you've been a great help. All right, perfect. All right, you guys, thank you so much for joining. Um, and again, join that Discord, man. Hit me up in the Discord. I'm there for you, Samuel, Andy. Uh, and um, I hope you guys have a great rest of the week. All, All right? right. All right, you, you too. Thank, thanks for everything. All right, man. Take care. Bye bye. All right. All right. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Bye, Andy. Good night, guys. Later. Bye, Andy. Bye, bye Brandon. Bye. Thanks.